Chainsaw Man rated 19 plus for excessive chainsaw violence, probably. The opening already looking like the intro to Silent Hill 1. First episode means tragic origin story, probably. Look at your hands. Don't look at your hands. Oh, he has hands. He has hands. For now. <laughs> he has hands for now. I think I just saw abs. I think I saw abs. Shadow abs. Wait, he lives here? I was about to say it's a weird place to wake up. Very silent and atmospheric start to the show. Very isolated. Very fitting. For a show called Chainsaw Man. Oh, I get it. He's an entrepreneur. <laughs> He's a hustler. No! That's where you cross the huge line. So what is that, like $10,000? That's not a lot for a nut. <laughs> oh, he's in debt. Yeah, debt can feel that way. So he's a devil hunter and is a very bizarre pet. So why would you sell- okay. And we get the opening already, hell yeah. There's something about the style of this that already reminds me of Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, this is fun. What in the world? What kind of conference room shenanigans are they getting up to? Alright, looks like we've got a big crew, solid crew. <laughs> what in the world? This is bizarre. Power! Yes. I feel the power. This is really interesting. It's really unique. It's got a very, like, playful, playful feel. And a lot of innuendo. Yeah, this intro is really fun. The kind of intro that grows on you a lot. I feel like this, this show is going to be very tongue-in-cheek. A lot more fun and humorous than I imagined. Instead of just, like, carnage. I heard Chainsaw Man. Honestly, didn't know what to expect. But just pictured, like, really dark and gritty and gory. But looks like it's going to be a lot more... A lot, a lot of fun. And also dark and gory. What makes you think it was a tomato? Denji. Look, he's got cash flow. Alright, you got cash flow, you're surviving. That's alright. Well, you can eat on that. I know for a fact you can eat on that. That's convenience store onigiri or samgap kimbap for a week. And there's a ton of variety of these things, so you can you can live large on 18. He's good at what he does. Also, he's gonna continuously pay us this debt. In this debt trap he's in. That's not even his, it's his dad's. Yeah, this is the part of the story where the, the main character is still kind of asleep in a cycle. Based on what I know about him. <laughs> Jeez. Don't be that enthusiastic. You can do it without looking so happy. Well, that's one extra onigiri for the week. Oh, who's the who's laughing now? <laughs> I only put the used cigarette in my mouth for two minutes. Still just asleep. I have a feeling a big opportunity is gonna come his way. That's tough. <laughs> That's a good dream. I mean, you know. And then sadness. That is such a huge tragedy, and uh, that's just gut wrenching. Losing his dad that way, and now taking on his whole all his burdens. And that's when he met the the pet. I wonder if that's that's not a coincidence. I doubt that's a coincidence. The timing was just too perfect. I'm just guessing. There's probably a thematic connection between. Oh, he's injured. Between devil hunting and you know, real world phenomenon. When do they appear to you? When can you do it? It's very sacrificial of him, especially for this weird chainsaw dog. Just be careful where you point that thing.
I mean, the guy's gritty. Talk about being asleep or being stuck. No wonder this is so normal to him. I mean, starting off the way he started off, literally dangling above being abandoned as a kid and then having a, a predatory loan shark come down on him. He's so low that looking up is just a normal life out of poverty. Though, one thing that's interesting is that even though this is objectively a pretty bad state to be in, there's something about him already, and maybe this is just me projecting, that actually feels like he's sort of enjoying it, or is connected to his life in in a sufficient way. And I can say there was a period in my life where I lost my job, but had, you know, rent to pay, and my sister was living with me at that time, and I just completely ran out of money. And I was subsisting on meals like rice and mustard, and could feel the, the fire against my feet, you know? But there was something really interesting about that that I remember, which is, it wasn't a bad feeling. I've been less engaged in life with a lot better situations. There was something about it that gave me a kind of identity, you know, like it's me against the world. And there's something thrilling about it, and I also was doing odd jobs, like I was living on gig jobs from Craigslist, like stripping out, closed down movie theaters, and working at nightclubs for Christmas Eve parties. That's when I had my stint as a private investigator. And it was kind of cool, like in a Bart Simpson way, you know, where you imagine having a tough life and he's like, cool, you know? There's something about that that's real. It felt like a test and it felt like I was proving myself. I mean, everyone needs purpose, right? And I think when you're in a bad situation, your purpose becomes kind of clear. It's like just surviving adversity and it changes your whole perspective. I mean, how can you dream big? How can you think about doing great things when you're wondering where food is going to come from? And you can get stuck in it because you get used to it. You start to identify with it. I mean, it's no wonder that his biggest goal is getting laid, you know? That's a reach for him. What does he have left to get? you know but by the same token what does he have left to lose except his virginity and his life compounding it is the fact that this is the only life he really knows it's gonna be girls oh that's sweet <laughs> there, there it is <laughs> that's very wholesome and pure and then <laughs> just that's just so lonely just so lonely Oh no, is he ill? That's a problem you just don't need, on top of everything else. Oh no. It's time to start selling meth, but he probably doesn't have the chemistry knowledge. But this is the episode of Major Transformation. Really, he has nothing to lose now. He's terminally ill, it seems. So any kind of bargain he can take, he'll just take it. That much is clear. But what's going to be the bargain? A man who can't even dream. Very fitting. There's something a little bit shady about this abandoned warehouse at this time. There are a lot of body parts I would sell before my eye and not like a leg. It's a backstab. Classic warehouse backstab. He's not, <laughs> not reading between the lines. <gasps> no! And the dog. I feel like he's gonna get that too. Zombie devil, this is a world of terrible deals. No, he's gonna become a devil himself. How is he moving? He has grit for sure. And he's still holding the dog too. Protagonist, loyalty, heart of gold check. This is awesome and terrifying. It looks like Jason. Yeah, he's not making out making it out of this as a, a mortal. Oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, that's infuriating. Can I just have a life where I'm not being stabbed in the back a thousand times by zombies? Power would be really dangerous in his hands too, I think. Imagine having all the power to get what he wants now. They actually threw him in the dumpster. And that's just the end of the show. He just dies here. Oh, maybe the dog can help him. Maybe the dog can give him a deal. He was always kind to the dog. Maybe there's something also very John Wick about this as well. You took my dog, and now I take all of your lives. Making sure his dog eats before him, even though he's starving too. He's so down and out, he's projecting his life streams on his de demon dog. His sacrifice is going to be rewarded. I wonder if the bread is a Christian metaphor. I think it's the opposite. Oh, Pachita talks. Pachita's gone. That might be where he gets the chainsaw powers. Interesting. 
I gotta think more about this. Yeah, there's definitely a theme emerging here. Still gonna change all you. Oh, is that the trigger? Nice! It's like a ripcord! The zombie horde is a cocoon that he's going to emerge from as a chainsaw butterfly. The power of Pochita. <laughs> And here comes the blood. Oh, he's got one on his head, too. The design is awesome. Looks like Chainsaw Venom. Chainsaw Carnage. I definitely want to one of them, though. This is not just a, a demon kill. This is also revenge for his uh, indentured servitude from the people who betrayed him. Armored Skull. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun. What a great power. It's like so simple, but so satisfying. Even, even demons feel fear. <laughs> yes. Oh, damn. Something about the sound is so, so visceral, so grotesque. I think we just eliminated our debt, too. I can't help but wonder, there's something about this that's obvious and justified, right? Killing the demons. But he's also a demon himself. He also has a lot of power he never had before. He ended up becoming the same. It was the same risk for him. There's definitely a theme emerging about, like, the difference between the desire of a dream and losing yourself in selfishness. There was a simple beauty to his life before that on some level he appreciated, like I was saying. His escaping that life is a legitimate and healthy dream, but it also sort of unlocks the bounds of possibility. And that comes at a great temptation of grasping the things he wanted out of a sort of spite or greed and losing the things that actually were valuable that he always had, like his relationship with Fuchida and his generosity, his kindness, his self-sacrifice. It's no coincidence that the villains of this episode became zombies by seeking greater power. Now he has that same power, so what does he do with it and where does that lead him? What does he actually end up standing for? Is it just his own conquest or pride? I feel like he has the, the capacity to be very proud. Or is it actually doing something, you know, in service? I feel like a man always walks that line, you know? It's weird when you can suddenly get everything you want. You know, the things that you've been deprived of. It's hard to stay measured. There's something really unique about how this show uses quiet and stillness and, like, nature. <laughs> combined with insane action. This might be the, the league or whatever crew he ends up joining. Suddenly him sleeping on, I think it's her lap in the intro makes a lot more sense. The guy's craving affection, just any kind of love. Put, a, put those away first, maybe. Oh, she did. This is what he's been craving all his life, just any kind of affection. Oh, is that like the reverse trigger? Sun's getting real low. Public safety. Everything comes at a price. There's something interesting about this too, because now suddenly, even though he's free, he's falling right into another agreement, and it's kind of at the whim of chance if they're actually good or have his best interests at heart. But she's a pretty girl, and she hugged him, so that seals the deal. Food and affection. Bread with jam? Oh, and coffee, man. You had me a jam. Is he looking for a girlfriend or is he looking for a mom? And then movie credits! <laughs> I don't think this is going to be the actual ending. This feels more like pilot credits. Cool song, though. More songs to add to my anime workout playlist, finally. So for the pilot episode of a new anime, for a new series, it's excellent. It does so many things really well. The protagonist hits some familiar notes in that he's sort of good-hearted, virtuous, for now, generous, compassionate to others and to his pet, which is just immediate points in my book, but also has something really interesting that I'm hoping they'll explore more in future episodes, which is like a longing for love. That I suspect will be a really great touch because it's so relatable. In fact, I think it's going to be way deeper than it's portrayed here, where it's just like he wants to sleep with a girl. It's all connected. That I think is, is not 
like a typical anime thing where it's just, you know, he's someone who's girl crazy, which honestly would be understandable in itself, but is more like a desire for acknowledgement or validation or just any kind of connection. I think for a lot of people, sex is not just sex, it's also validation. In addition to him just being a teenage boy, you know, it can be both. He's just alone. He also, if I had to guess, seems like an extrovert, somebody who just needs other people in order to feel healthy or to feel like they exist. And that's something I relate to quite a bit as a very strong extrovert. I would not survive in this life or there would be ramifications of living this way for this long. I know that for a fact. So he's kind of in a dangerous place because now he, he has this woman and I'm guessing, you know, a whole group that can provide something that he's had such a lack of for so long, plus all this power and food. I mean, he's in a really great place full of potential, but also Kind of a dangerous place because he's going to be spending a lot of time just trying to catch up and fill that vacuum he's, he's been living for what 10 years i don't know how old he is so he could potentially be a tool like a very willing tool he could also lose himself in power all that to say there's something very intriguing i would say more intriguing than usual for a protagonist in a first episode then just i think aside from that it also is just beautiful it looks beautiful i really love the fact that the action is so insane and gory and primal in a very basic but really cool way while also being very moody and atmospheric and very cinematic and then also it wasn't necessarily necessarily the case for this episode, but just basing on the intro, I think the intro says a lot about the show. It's going to have its quirk. It's going to be fun. It's not going to take itself too seriously. It's not going to be all gore and all serious demon killing. It feels like there's a levity to it that will kind of make it more 3D. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. I'm very excited to follow his journey into finding love or affection or whatever this is that he's seeking. You know, I can sort of feel it at a very animalistic level. Very intriguing. Very intriguing.